The following question reads that uh, compound P is an alcohol. Uh, that's the first information. Uh, so this over here is an alcohol and that can be converted into compound Q in the following reaction sequence. So P changes to another compound and uh, that compound then changes into Q. So that is provided. There's a reaction going on. It's a two-step reaction. And the next information that's given is that spectral analysis of P and Q are carried out. Uh, the mass spectrum P shows M, M plus 1, peak ratio of 4.5 ratio 0.15. And you're supposed to calculate the number of carbon atoms in P. So I'm going to use the number of carbon atoms using this formula. Find the number of carbon atoms. It's 100 over 1.1 into the height of M plus 1. Uh, divide by M and this M M plus 1 ratio is provided over here. So we just need to put these values in the expression. So I've uh, substituted the values. It's 100 over 1.1 uh, into 0.15 divided by 4.5. My answer comes out to be approximately 3. So I'm going to round off that value and I'll have uh, this will give me 3 carbon atoms. Which means uh, that the number of carbon atoms in all these molecules that's uh, you have 3 carbon atoms in P three carbon atoms in whatever the substance is, and three carbon atoms in Q as well. Now remember, it's already given that P is an alcohol. So I'm going to uh, draw a few molecules, uh, three carbon atoms, and it's an alcohol. So let's use this information, three carbon atoms and an alcohol, and come up with uh, the number of isomers that could possibly be P. So it's either three carbon atoms in a row, and it could be a primary alcohol, the OH would be at the at the very end and the rest of the atoms would be hydrogen. So that's uh, one possible P. Uh, the other one could be that uh, there would be three carbon atoms. Remember, I can't uh, make branches with three carbon atoms. What I can only do is the other isomer could be that the OH group is on the second carbon atom and the rest of the atoms are all they're all hydrogens so uh, these two molecules now remember I, I still don't have an, have enough information about uh, which of the two would be this alcohol and I'm not even sure whether it's a saturated alcohol I've drawn all the single bonds over here but it could possibly be a double bond somewhere present in, in these molecules as well. Now in the next part of the question, you're now given the NMR spectrum of P and Q uh, shown below. Now uh, these were the diagrams for P that I drew. It was an alcohol uh, uh, and it had three carbon atoms. So I drew two alcohols, two isomers of each other and it could be one of them. Now uh, uh, let's look at the NMR spectrum of P first. You can clearly see that they are four different chemical environments in P. So if there are four different chemical environments in P, I'm going to first look at these two molecules, these two candidates that I have, and I'm going to see which one has four different chemical environments. Now, if you look over here, uh, these hydrogens over here and the hydrogens on this side, they have exactly the same chemical environment. So they're going to resonate at one frequency, uh, let's call that F0. This hydrogen is different from the others, so it's going to resonate at a different frequency, let's call that F1. And this OH is going to resonate at a different frequency, let's call that F3. So this molecule over here, these two, these hydrogens, CH3s, CH3s, are in exactly the same chemical environment, so there are three different chemical environments. One is this one. Uh, the other one is this one and the third one is this one. So there are three chemical environments in this molecule but over here in my enema spectrum there are four different chemical environments so it cannot be this molecule. Let's look at this other molecule now. Now this molecule, uh, these hydrogens over here have a different chemical environment that's one. So let's uh, assume that it's resonating at F0. Uh, these two hydrogens, the CH2 hydrogens, they have a different chemical environment that's uh, uh, a second frequency would be absorbed for their resonance. These hydrogens over here have a different uh, chemical environment, so let's call that F2. And this final one is OH uh, has a different chemical environment, let's call that F3. So in total, there are four different chemical environments. So there would be four different resonant frequencies. 
So this uh, molecule matches the data that's given in the NMR spectrum. Four different chemical environments. This molecule also has four different chemical environments. Now I'm going to further confirm whether this data matches this molecule over here. So let's look at the splitting pattern. The first one is, uh, let's look at this OH peak. Remember OH, uh, OH causes no splitting. It would be a singlet peak. So do I have a singlet peak in this uh, in the four chemical environments? There is a singlet peak, so this must be an OH peak. Remember, OH uh, hydrogen uh, in the hydroxyl group uh, would uh, would not be uh, would not split or would cause splitting. Uh, let's look at this uh, CH3 at the end. This CH3, the neighboring carbon atom has two hydrogens. So according to the n plus one rule, this will have uh, according to the n plus one rule, it's going to have a triplet peak because the neighboring carbon atom has two hydrogens. So these two hydrogens are going to uh, interfere with the resonance of these three hydrogens. So they would be a triplet peak uh, for CH3. So there is a triplet peak over here. Uh, and uh, there are two triplet peaks. So in my data, in my splitting pattern, there should be two triplet. This one is a triplet peak. This one is also a triplet peak. So let's find out whether there's another triplet peak or not. Now, if you look at this CH2 over here, this CH2 is also uh, the neighboring carbon atom. Remember, we're not going to look at the OH because OH doesn't cause splitting because of the shielding of the lone pairs on oxygen. Uh, so you have the CH2 over here. Uh, these hydrogens are going to resonate and the neighboring carbon atom also has two hydrogens. So according to the N plus one rule, uh, they would, it, this CH2 is also going to have a triplet peak. It, it will be, they would be splitting. The neighboring hydrogens are going to uh, the two hydrogens, according to the N plus one rule, would create a triplet peak for these hydrogens over here. So uh, my molecule has two triplet peaks. This data over here also has two triplet peaks. And let's find out whether there is a multiplet peak or not. So we are left with these two hydrogens. These two hydrogens are going to resonate and their neighboring carbon. Uh, the two hydrogens on the right hand side, there are three hydrogens on the left hand side. So the neighboring carbon atoms have a lot of hydrogen. So this peak over here is definitely going to be, it's going to be a multiplet, a multiplet peak. So this one is going to be a multiplet peak. So, so far, my splitting data also matches the NMR spectrum that's drawn over here at two triplet peaks. So I have two triplet peaks, a singlet peak. I have an OH which will cause a, a singlet and I have a multiplet as well this middle CH2 because the neighboring carbon atoms have a lot of hydrogens. So this uh, moly, this one, these hydrogens over here, these protons over here will create a multiplet peak. And now, although I don't have any doubt that this molecule, this data is exactly matching this data over here, but I can also open the NMR spectrum chart and I can match the chemical shifts with my protons over here. So we're going to do this uh, now. So remember, there's a there's a triplet peak uh, at chemical shift one. So we're going to analyze this. Uh, I have two triplet peaks, so I don't know which one is this one. So let's open the data booklet. So if you look at the uh, chemical shift chart, uh, around one, there's only uh, an alkane type protons uh, that are protons uh, attached, to attached to carbons. Uh, these would resonate at 0.9 to 1.7. So going back to our, going back to our NMR, this is at one. So this must be the normal alkane type protons. So it must be this one. This would be the F naught that I wrote down. Uh, the, so this, these CH3s are the ones that are, that are shown over here. Uh, let's also continue to match. Remember uh, one to 1.7. The other CH2, this one had a multiplet peak. So my assumption was it was this one. So we can confirm that. Remember, this one is also an alkane type hydrogen because uh, the hydrogens are bonded to, to a carbon chain. So on both sides, there's a carbon chain going. So this is also an alkane type uh, proton. So this would be also within that range. So these two are close together. So this is my multiplet peak. So this data also, my multiplet data also matches uh, this according to the chart that I, uh, that I showed you. Uh, moving to this uh, two hydrogens over here, uh, my assumption is it is uh, it is going to be a triplet peak because the neighboring hydrogens, there are two hydrogens in the neighborhood. So these hydrogens, uh, 
are more likely to this peak uh, my assumption is this peak because it's also a triplet peak this one would match with this uh, ch2 protons so it's resonating at 3.7 or 3.6 and this ch2 is next to single o so let's open the chart so let's find this ch2 next to single o this is uh, shown over here ch2 next to single o and again it's matching this range 3.2 to 4 so this is also correct so this triplet peak uh, matches the data in the nmr spectrum chart the chemical shift data and the final thing is oh uh, i don't need to open the chart uh, it must be this one oh has a resonance at 0 0.5 to 6 so it is within that range so this final peak is for it is going to be for oh so i've uh, i've perfectly figured out what p is now now the next data that is provided is for q now q is uh, has three chemical environments so there is uh, there are protons at this chemical shift a proton at this chemical shift and a proton a singlet peak over here so a singlet peak would uh, would give us a give us some idea that it must be an oh peak because oh doesn't uh, split it doesn't cause splitting and it's always a singlet peak so my my assumption is that it must be an oh peak Another thing about this peak is that it is resonating at chemical shift around 12. So let's open the data and uh, see what resonates, uh, which OH resonates at around 12. So if you look at the data, uh, this OH peak, uh, a singlet peak of a carboxylic acid, is uh, lying within that range around 12. So I'm suspecting that it must be a carboxylic acid. So let's go back. So this must be C double bond O and OH. It must be a carboxylic acid and a proton in a carboxylic acid molecule. Uh, now, uh, what we have so far figured out about this uh, entire reaction is, so this, uh, whatever Q is, it must be a carboxylic acid. What I have figured out so far is that uh, if you look at the reactions that were given previously, they've told us that P got converted into some compound and then it converted, got converted into Q. P had three carbon atoms, so I'm assuming that Q must have, it must, it probably has three carbon atoms as well. And I'm suspecting that it must be a carboxylic acid. Actually, I'm pretty sure according to the NMR data, it must be a carboxylic acid. So let's draw a three carbon atom carboxylic acid and see whether this data is going to match with this carboxylic acid. So this is my guess. And I'm just going to confirm whether this would be a good guess or not the first thing is if you look at the chemical environment uh, this is these three hydrogens are in the same chemical environment these two hydrogens are in the same chemical environment and this OH is in a different chemical environment so there are three uh, three different chemical environments and there would be three different absorptions so that data matches three different chemical environments are present in the data so three different chemical environments are also present in our molecule then the splitting pattern would suggest that there would be a singlet peak because of OH. Uh, OH is always a singlet. Uh, these protons over here, the neighbor, neighboring uh, atom has three protons, three hydrogens. So according to the N plus 1 rule, these uh, would resonate and they would form a quadruplet peak. These three hydrogens would resonate and their neighboring has two hydrogens. So that would indicate according to the N plus 1 rule that these protons would resonate uh, and their peak is going to be a triplet peak because the neighboring carbon atom has two hydrogens. So there's going to be a singlet peak, a quadruplet peak, and a triplet peak. And that also matches the data. Uh, singlet peak because of OH in carboxylic acid, uh, a triplet peak, and a quadruplet peak. Now we opened the enema spectrum, and you can see that there's an alkane-type proton, a CH3 we had in our molecule. Uh, that should resonate around 0.9 to 1.7 chemical shift. Uh, then there was... A CH2 next to Cedal Bondo, that should resonate around 2.223. So let's see if that matches, uh, if this data, the data booklet data, matches the chemical shift data given in the table. So going back to our diagram, you can see that uh, that this CH2 was next to a Cedal Bondo, so it is resonating at around 2.2 to 2.3. So that, uh, that perfectly matches the data in the data booklet. And this CH3, this alkane type hydrogens, Protons, uh, they're resonating at around 1, so 
the data booklet suggested 0.9 to 1.7 so this is also within that range so this molecule is perfectly correct this data uh, three chemical environments the splitting patterns of all the uh, environments and the chemical shifts all match propanoic acid this molecule that i've drawn over here so we have figured out the entire uh, 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 p and q the structures of p and q we're now going to just uh, quickly answer uh, the rest of the questions the first one is that in the spectrum of p clearly label the peak due to the oh group with an x so going back to the spectrum of p uh, this over here i've already done that i've shown that, that this was the oh peak so that is done the next part is uh, we need to state how many different proton environments are present in compound q so it was clearly obvious that they were three different chemical environments so let's answer that quickly the last part is what evidence is there in the spectra that P is a primary rather than a secondary alcohol. Uh, so you can look at the molecule and the diagram of the molecules that I drew earlier. So if we go back and the way uh, these were the two alcohols that I figured out initially and I selected this one. The reason I selected this one was that it had four chemical environments. They were this one a proton environment over here, one proton environment and one proton environment and so a total of four proton environments exist over here. Whereas in this other molecule, these two CH3s are equivalent. They would resonate at exactly the same frequency. So that's one environment. One environment is this one and one environment is this one. So the secondary alcohol had only three environments. They were only three chemical environments in our secondary alcohol. So we're going to state that in the answer. So I've clearly written this in my answer, secondary alcohol, they have three chemical environments and I've drawn the secondary alcohol, uh, which is, uh, so three chemical environments and our molecule, our original molecule P, if you look at the NMR spectrum, had four chemical environments, which is why I selected this primary alcohol over here. Now going back to the last part, which is, uh, we need to draw the structure of Q, which we have already done that. We have uh, figured this out, that it was a propanoic acid molecule, so that is also done.